How's it rolling guys? Today we are looking at one of the most interesting developments in the supersonic jet market. Arion Corporation recently provided us with updated information about their AS2 supersonic business jet project. The company believes that their updated design will lay the foundation for a future family of supersonic commercial and military jets. Unlike the previous version, the revised AS2 now has a swept delta wing, under wing engines, and a sleeker tail section. Arion is now referring to this iteration as the final design, which they plan to produce in the coming years. Today we're going to discuss Arion as a company, as well as their AS2 supersonic jet project. I'll be focusing on what we can expect in the years to come, as well as the expected capabilities of the AS2. We'll also touch on why I think the Arion project is so much more than just a paper plane. But before that, be sure to hit the subscribe button and please let me know what you'd like to hear about next. So we'll start with the Arion AS2's expected capabilities. The finalized design is intended to supercruise with non-afterburning engines up to 5,000 nautical miles at Mach 1.4. It will have a cabin large enough for 12 passengers. The Arion AS2 configuration has changed many times since the company's inception in 2004. As a warning, most of the footage in this video will be of the designs leading up to the final one. The Arion AS2 was originally designed as an aircraft that would capitalize off of design and engineering aspects that, unfortunately, led to the failure of the Concorde as a commercial platform. The AS2 was originally intended to travel supersonic over water, while being able to operate efficiently around Mach 0.96 over land. This is a large reason for the original design having a trapezoidal, slightly tapered wing design. This design allows for higher lift, but overall lower speeds. The wing design was shaped for passive supersonic natural laminar flow, or SNLS. In simpler terms, this allows for a boundary layer that remains stable for a longer time. The image on screen shows what a boundary layer is, as well as what boundary layer separation looks like. The transition to a full delta wing is due to Arion wanting an aircraft that can quietly fly supersonic over land, maximizing capabilities and time saved in flight. In 2014, the AS2, still with a trapezoidal wing, transitioned into a trijet configuration. The reason is not too specific, but the overall change helps to mitigate noise and allowed for a shorter fuselage design. By 2019, Arion had chosen their engine supplier for the project, and they also announced a partnership with Boeing. During this time, they solidified working relationships with many other leading-edge aerospace companies. We'll get to those companies in a little bit when we start talking about why this program is likely to fly. But back to the airframe design. In April of 2020, Arion has committed to the design you see on screen right now. Overall, the latest design reflects their decision to increase the AS2's overland speed thanks to what they are calling boomless crews. The current AS2, with a speed of Mach 1.2, is designed to exploit the Mach cutoff principle. This occurs when an aircraft flies slightly supersonic, between about Mach 0.95 and Mach 1.15. Basically, the Mach cutoff is a phenomenon in which thicker air at lower altitude has the ability to refract the sonic boom away. The visual on screen shows you what this looks like. Essentially, when traveling within this Mach range, the sonic boom produced by the AS2 is expected to not have the strength or ability to penetrate lower, denser parts of our atmosphere. While mitigating sound, flying an aircraft in this cutoff range does present some challenges. Arion CEO stated, you're going to fly an airplane in the highest drag region, which is Mach cutoff. To do that, you've got to be a very efficient aircraft in virtually every segment of the flight. 
So when we started to look at this, we had to think of every element of drag, not just wave drag, but pressure drag, skin friction, lift induced, and of course all of the miscellaneous. You have to solve all of those problems. Due to this nature, no single technology that Arion considered during development could dominate the entire airframe. Instead, the different technologies had to be balanced. And this is how Arion came to the conclusion that their current configuration is the best overall. The final wing design has a lot less SNLF incorporated, but has much more capability for higher speeds. In fact, the now bulging forward fuselage design comes from a concept known as the Whitcomb Area Rule, or simply Area Rule. This image of the F-102 Starfighter with and without area ruling applied demonstrates the notable decreases in drag across the airframe's body. The same concept is now in play with the AS-2's current and final configuration. The new Delta Wing will have a 79-foot wingspan, with large leading and trailing edge devices for improved low-speed flight and field performance. This helps reduce noise at takeoff. Arion has not released exact information on the wing's moving surfaces, but the industry expects that the trailing edge is believed to support a set of high-speed flapperons inboard mid-span flaps, along with low-speed ailerons outboard. Switching to an S-duct configuration for the tail engine now allows for a shorter tail, which in turn enables a shorter fuselage. In the previous iterations, there was a lot of non-payload carrying space behind the passenger cabin for aerodynamic purposes. The AS-2 is now just under 145 feet in length, opposed to a previous length of 184. Overall, the new fuselage, engine configuration, and packaged aerodynamic design will allow for shallower approach angles than the Concorde. This means overall increased visibility and means we will not be seeing a droop snoot. Even with this improved forward visibility, the AS-2 will offer an enhanced HUD system to improve crew situational awareness. The AS-2 will have a gross weight of 139,000 pounds. It will carry up to 70,000 pounds of fuel with a payload capacity of 8,000 pounds. The aircraft's fuel system, like Concorde, will have the ability to maintain trim and compensate for changes in pressure that occur between transonic and supersonic flight, that mock cutoff range we talked about a little earlier. The AS-2 is now projected to be able to fly up to 5,000 nautical miles at 1.4 Mach. So that's the basic configuration of the aircraft. We're now going to talk about why this development will probably fly soon. And to make this point, we'll discuss the company's executive team, existing working relationships and partnerships the company has, and then we'll focus on their engine supplier to wrap this video up. So first we have Tom Weiss, CEO of Arion. Weiss has over 31 years of experience with Northrop Grumman. He served as president of its aerospace systems sector. He oversaw 23,000 employees. Aerospace Systems at Northrop specializes in space-based observatories, satellites, fully autonomous systems, combat aircraft, and high-powered lasers. Prior to this, he was president of the Technical Services Division, with 19,000 employees. Vice joined Northrop in 1986 as an engineer for the B-2 Stealth Bomber. Next, we have Dr. Richard Tracy who is Arion's Chief Technology Officer. He has done extensive research on high-speed aircraft, for which he holds many patents. He has worked on the single-stage-to-orbit Rockwell X-30 experimental spacecraft concept and the massive RQ-4 Global Hawk UAB by Northrop. In the 1970s, he led the design process for the Learstar 600, which was developed into the Bombardier Challenger private jet and later CRJ series. 
Next, you have Steve Baroth, who is overseeing global supply chain management, as well as management of mission assurance and safety programs. Baroth previously worked for Triumph Aerospace. Before Triumph, he worked at Northrop Grumman for over 30 years in various leadership positions. As you can see, Arion is led by a team of industry professionals who have both the knowledge and industry know-how required to get this program flying. Next, we'll discuss Arion's global supply chain. As already mentioned, Boeing is a large partner and has been providing assistance on overall engineering and manufacturing aspects. With the Dreamliner and previous programs, Boeing is very experienced at sourcing a global supply chain that fits their demands. This expertise is instrumental in getting Arion off the ground. When the aircraft takes its first flight, Boeing will continue to advise on the flight test program. And Boeing, having done extensive research for the Sonic Cruiser, or the original 7E7 product likely contributed to the Arion's bulging, area rule proficient fuselage design. Outside of that, Arion has partnered with Honeywell Aerospace, which is providing the avionics, and Safran for landing gear and nacelles, UK-based GKN Aerospace and subsidiary Fokker Technologies are providing electrical wiring and the empennage structure. Spirit Aerosystems will supply the forward fuselage. Spain-based Air Nova is providing the mid-fuselage structure. These are all actual aerospace companies, and real development contracts are in place. Also remember that many of the Arion executive team have actual aerospace career backgrounds at Northrop Grumman and so on. Actual work is being done and paid for to make this program into a reality. This brings us to the engines. GE Aviation has been selected by Arion to provide the Affinity engine as the power plant for their supersonic aircraft. Remember, the breakthrough here over the Rolls-Royce Olympus engine found on the Concorde is that it is non-after burning. The GE Affinity engine will be enclosed in two slim saffron designed nacelles. The third engine will be mounted in the tail, with an exhaust nozzle immediately aft of the tail fin. The engines now feature spiked inlets for external compression of air. The spiked inlets will shock airflow down to subsonic speeds for inlet recovery. Tom Weiss is maintaining overall secrecy on this and has stated, I won't say a lot about what we do with that inlet, but it meets all of the really tough requirements for inlet distortion in engines that try to be all things at different speed requirements. The front of the inlet is thought to include an automatically controlled variable geometry section. It will likely be actuated to move forward and backward varying the ramp angle. This allows for control of the flow area and the shock system. Without describing the specific movement of the inlet ring, Vice says, if you watch this aircraft go through about Mach 0.4, I think you'll be watching quite an interesting ballet. The Concorde had a similar system in practice with inlet gates designed to control airflow. These had a few positions depending on the exact phase of flight. Work on the Affinity, the world's first non-afterburning commercial supersonic engine, is underway at GE Aviation. PDR, or Product Design Review, is scheduled for later in 2020. Brad Modier, Vice President and GM of Business and General Aviation and Integrated Systems for GE Aviation, has stated, we're working closely on this timeline. This is a real program. It's not just a paper exercise. We have hundreds of engineers who are assigned to this full time, and that number is going to probably triple by the end of the year. The Affinity engine is likely based on a modified version of the high pressure core found in the F-110. The F-110 engine powers fighter jets like the F-14 Tomcat, F-15 Eagle, and F-16 Falcon. 
The F-110 is based off of the F-101 engine, which powered the Rockwell B-1 Lancer, or Flying Bone. The F-101 also led to the direct development of the CFM-56, which of course today reliably powers thousands of 737s and A320s. Therefore, the Affinity engine is based off of existing, proven, and reliable engine technology. Engine technology that also has an existing supply chain that can offer solid maintenance support. The Olympus 593 engines built for the Concorde did power the Avro Vulcan, but it did not see production range into the thousands as with the F-101 core. General Electric is also working on a fore and aft variable geometry system that can be integrated with the exhaust system to further optimize performance and reduced noise. Details have not been released on this. The Affinity engine will likely have a two-row fan for the low pressure stage. To understand what this could look like, rewind the video to the clip of the Affinity engine or see this picture of the GE TF39 power plant. The TF39 powers the C5 Galaxy and has a one and a half row fan. The engine will likely consume 50% more fuel than the CFM56 baseline models. This means the aircraft must recover overall efficiency with higher speeds. This is likely the prime aspect that encouraged Arion to increase the AS2 speed from transonic to around Mach 1.4. Of course, to enable this, we also saw design revisions that ultimately mitigated noise and drag. As it currently stands, even with the coronavirus outbreak, Arion is remaining pretty upbeat. They believe they have found a reliable and sustainable balance of new technologies and existing technologies. They expect this balance will enable them to bring their aircraft to market. Arion intended to hold an aircraft PDR for preliminary design review in October of 2020, with first flight projected in 2024, followed by an entry into service two years later. The main thing slowing Arion down now are changes in supply chain due to the coronavirus outbreak. They even have an order from Flexjet for 20 Arion AS2 aircraft. The value of this order is around 2.4 billion. This means that the Arion AS2 has a list price around $120 million per frame. This list price is roughly double the cost of a Gulfstream G700. Flexjet, which offers its customers a fractional private jet ownership model, operates a fleet of 140 private jets. Even during this time, Arion is staying busy and just chose Melbourne Airport in Florida for their new HQ. This is making ground on a commitment made back in 2015 when they stated they were looking for a location within 200 nautical miles of an offshore supersonic flight test area. They expect it to require 100 acres on a major airport with a minimum 9,000 foot runway and other special geophysical requirements. MLB Airport, with a 10,200 foot long runway, will now be home to Arion. Their new home, named Arion Park, will be a 60 acre site located on the northwest corner of the airport. It will house the company's global headquarters and integrated campus for research, design, build, and maintenance of the AS2. Arion plans to break ground on the campus later this year, with manufacturing of the AS2 anticipated to start in early 2023. First flight will occur sometime in 2024, followed by a two-year-long test program. Outside of the coronavirus aspect, Arion seems to be doing really well and has met all of their product design intervals. With this development, it definitely looks like we will indeed have supersonic passenger jets very soon.